Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting leet code problem, called Maximum Total Damage with Spellcasting. It sounds like something out of a video game, and it's a fantastic example of a dynamic programming problem. Let's break it down together. So here's the setup. We're a magician, and we have an array of spells. Each number in the array represents the damage of a single spell. We can have multiple spells, with the same damage value. Our main goal is pretty straightforward. Cast a combination of spells to get the highest possible total damage. Simple enough, right? Well, there's a catch. Here's the tricky part. The rules of magic are very specific. If you decide to use any spells of a certain damage value, let's say damage 10, you are then forbidden from using any spells with damage values that are too close to 10. Specifically, you can't use spells with damage 8, 9, 11 or 12. This constraint is what makes the problem interesting. Let's walk through an example to see how this works. Imagine our spells have damages 1, 1, 3, and 4. First, it's helpful to group them. We have two spells of damage 1, giving a total of 2. One spell of damage 3, and one of damage 4. Now let's think about our choices. What if we decide to use the damage 4 spell? Its value is 4. The rule says we can't use spells with damage 2, 3, 5, or 6. This means the damage 3 spell is out, but, what about the damage 1 spells? 1 is far enough away from 4, so that's a valid combination. The total damage would be 4, plus the 2 from the damage 1 spells, which gives us 6. Okay, what if we started by picking the damage 3 spell instead? Its value is 3. The rules say we can't use spells with damage 1, 2, 4, or 5. That knocks out both our other groups. So if we pick 3, we can only get a total of 3. Comparing our options, 6 is clearly better than 3 so the maximum damage we can get is 6. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java, C++, and JavaScript towards the end of the video. The core idea here is dynamic programming. If you've ever seen the house robber problem, where you can't rob adjacent houses, this is very similar. First, we'll group our spells by damage value and count how many of each we have. This makes things much cleaner. Then, We'll go through these unique damage values one by one in increasing order at each damage value we face a simple choice we can either take all the spells of this damage or we can skip them if we take them we get their total damage but we have to add it to the best possible score from a previous spell that's far enough away if we skip them we just take the best score we had right before this step we'll always choose the option that gives us a higher score all right here's the full python code for this approach it might look a little dense at first, but don't worry, we're about to break it down piece by piece so it all makes sense. First up is the setup. We use a counter, which is a really handy tool in Python, to quickly count the occurrences of each damage value. So if we have three spells of damage 6, the counter will map 6 to 3. Then, we convert this into a sorted list of pairs. Each pair contains the damage value and its count. This gives us an ordered list to work through. Finally, we create our dynamic programming array, which we'll call F. This will store the maximum damage achievable at each step. Next, we handle the base case. The max damage for just the very first type of spell is simply its damage times its count. We initialize a variable mx to keep track of the best damage from a faraway spell and a pointer j to help us find it. Then we start our main loop, iterating through each of our unique spell types starting from the second one. This is the heart of the algorithm. For our current spell type at index i, we first need to find the best previous damage total we can legally add to. The while loop moves our pointer j forward to find the last valid spell type, that is, one with damage at least three less than our current one. The mx variable keeps track of the best result in that valid range. Then we calculate the damage if we take the current spell. This is its damage times its count, plus that mx value we just found. Now for the final decision. We have the value if we take the current spell. What if we skip it? Well, if we skip it, the best we can do is just the max damage from the previous step, f at i1. So we set the current best damage, f at i, to be the maximum of those two choices, taking the current spell or skipping it. After the loop finishes, the last element in our f array holds the maximum possible damage overall, so we return that. So how efficient is this? The time complexity is dominated by the initial sorting of the unique spell damages. If there are n unique damage values, this takes n log n time. The rest of the logic is a single pass, which is much faster. For space, we need to store the counts of each unique spell and our DP array. 
In the worst case, every spell has a unique damage value, so the space required is proportional to the input size, giving us order n space complexity. Alright, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can see the logic is identical, using a tree map to get the sorted unique keys, and then applying the same dynamic programming approach. You can pause the video here to take a closer look. Next up here is the C++ version. We use a STD map which keeps keys sorted automatically, making the initial step very convenient. The DP logic with the two pointers I and J remains the same. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. We use a map for counting, then convert the keys to an array and sort it. The rest of the implementation follows the exact same dynamic programming pattern. Hopefully, seeing it in a few languages helps solidify the concept. So let's wrap up with the key takeaways. When you see problems with lots of repeated numbers, a great first step is often to group them and count them. This simplifies the input dramatically. This problem is a classic example of a choice-based dynamic programming problem, similar to House Robber. The main idea is always breaking it down to a simple decision at each step. In this case, do we take the current group of spells or skip them? And we saw how a two-pointed technique helped us efficiently find the best previous result to build upon. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.